one of my favorite things about physics is the fact that things get weirder as they get smaller. When Once we got down to atoms, uh, atoms kind of behave as we would expect them to. They have mass, they don't disappear, <laughs> they can be manipulated, and they make up, they are the building blocks of, of who we are. But if you were to break down the atom into the even smaller bits, we call those subatomic particles, things stop making sense completely. Subatomic particles can blink in and out of existence. They can become entangled, where we can entangle two quantum particles and then separate them, and if you move one, the other one moves as well, even if there's nothing connecting the two of them. And another weird thing about subatomic particles is that they can exist in two different states at once, even if those states are fundamentally opposed to each other. And this is where a classic thought experiment about subatomic particles comes into play. And that is the thought experiment of Schrodinger's cat. So the, the idea of Schrodinger's cat is this. Let's say you have a cat that is made of a subatomic particle. And you put the subatomic cat into a box. You close the box. And there is a miniature nuclear reactor inside that box. Sorry, cat. And there's an exactly 50% chance that that nuclear reactor will go off and blow up that subatomic cat in the smithereens inside the box. But you have no way of knowing whether or not that cat is alive or dead. You only know there's a 50% chance. Now, if this was a regular atomic cat, even without looking in the box, you would know that that cat is either alive or dead. That makes sense. We, we live in an atomic world, and that it, it has to be one or the other, right? It can't be both. False. If this was a subatomic cat, if this cat was a subatomic particle, then before you look in the box, the cat is both alive and dead at the same time. And it is only when you open the box that the waveform of the superposition of the state of death or life for the cat will collapse into one or the other. But before you open the box of Schrodinger's subatomic cat, the cat exists as both alive and dead at the same time. It's called superposition, where instead of a, a binary one or the other thing, the cat is actually both alive and dead, and everything in between. It's a waveform, and you, you say you collapse that waveform into alive or dead when you observe the cat, when you open up the box. And that is a, a weird bit about, about subatomic particles that we see all the time, is that subatomic particles will act as if they exist in all the states until we look at them, and then they become one or the other which is a, a crazy thing, and this actually ties into another idea that I love I'm going to tie this up with, and that's the idea that we are, in fact, living in a simulation. And here's why this comes into play with the subatomic particles. Uh, I, I've heard authors and, and scientists talk about the fact that it, it's virtually inevitable that we live in a simulation because we're, our computer technology is continuing to advance, and at a certain point we're going to have computers that are powerful enough to run a full-scale simulation of what a world would look like with people in it and things, and there's no reason we wouldn't do that. And then there's no reason that that simulated reality that we've created will progress to the point where it is creating simulated realities inside of its reality, and then that simulated reality, and so on, further down the rat hole. But the, the, the end effect is that there may be a single actual reality that has spawned, you know, a certain number of simulated realities, which in turn spawn their own simulated realities eventually. And so there's, you know, uncounted, uncountable simulated realities that it's possible we're a part of. And maybe only one original reality, and chances are we're in one of the simulated ones and not in the original. And uh, one of the reasons this kind of fits into this idea of these crazy subatomic particles that can exist in multiple positions at once is the theory that it's actually just an artifact of the computer that is simulating our reality because it it's not going to process something until we look at it. It's it's like a, a you know when you when you're in a computer game and you know when you like you turn really quickly and your computer has to catch up and like fill in all the trees and they all kind of pop in as you look at them because the computer isn't going to be generating everything because that would be a waste of computer resources. It's only generating what you look at. And then when you turn, sometimes you can see that effect where it's the computer has to catch up and put in and fill in all the bits that you're looking at over here now. Well, the, the idea is that this, this, uh, this idea about subatomic particles collapsing into a certain state only when you look at them, it's just an artifact of the computer 
that it's generating our reality, and it doesn't bother to generate an actual state until you look at it, because it's an efficient computer. Mind blown.